he walked in. I don't know if the word cocky is the right word, but he just pretty much said, hey, my name is Pumzila Makondwana. I'm new in town. Um, you just, I'm just going to leave my number. You decide if you get back to me. Really? And I'm just like, who does this guy think he is? <laughs> so... <laughs> So whilst their significant others play the bounce on the field, they're playing the moment and grabbing life by the horns. From the other half is a look into the lives of the wives and girlfriends of your favorite Vodacom Bulls players. We get to know them just a little bit more, the ins, the outs, and everything in between. Carol. Hi. A businesswoman, a professional makeup artist, a real estate agent, basically a superwoman. Like, is there an S under that chest that we don't know about? I tell myself in the morning when I wake up, I'm a superwoman, fake it till you make it. And that's how I start my day. <laughs> is, is there a lot of planning that goes into being Carol, clearly with three plus careers? I have to, I have to. If I, if I were to wing it, yeah, I, I wouldn't have made it far. Wouldn't have made it far. So I have to plan. You're a big planner and you're also a fashionista, as you can see over Thank here. Thank you. And then professional makeup, it's not necessarily... Um, the thing that comes to mind when I think real estate agent, how did the two worlds kind of come together and was it a huge change from one to the other? Um, no, so it wasn't a, a huge change at all. I'd been doing sales since coming out of school. So doing makeup was something that was me, a hobby. Mm -hmm. I was always a girl in school who had her brows done. Civvy's day, you knew it was me. So uh, the makeup was just an extension into the professional aspect of it. But, you know, sales and talking to people, I love people. I love engaging with people. So going from makeup into real estate was just the perfect version and um, fusion, rather, sorry, of wanting to be in control of my life, sure. um, be my own boss. Mm -hmm. And I think it really what helps my career for myself and also with my partner. So... I love it. I love it. It works, it works seamlessly together. So you work alone and he works in a team. Yes. So real estate and then rugby player. Yes. Very different worlds, if you will. Like if you were to, you wouldn't even find it in the same encyclopedia necessarily. No. How does the mesh up of that work? How do the puzzle pieces fit together? Are there challenges? Are there things that you guys have to prioritize? Explain to us just the ins and outs of businesswoman and rugby player. I think actually, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say there's a challenge. It benefits me so well. So if he's got a game on a Saturday, I can just say, listen, I'm sorry, I'm not taking anything this weekend. It's just me and my man, okay? All right. <laughs> so it's, it's not a challenge. It really works out, wonderfully, works out wonderfully for me. And I think also because of the work I do, everyone needs a home. Everyone needs someone to stay. So his, his team, that's my client base. So ah. yeah, he prefers to keep it separate, but um, <laughs> we have our influence. With the work coming together, you know, he's disciplined. He's, you know, the person waking up at 5 a.m., 4 a.m. You're clearly very disciplined with just putting together, you know, so many spheres of your life and making it work as well as making your relationship work. Yeah. But if that moves out, like on the other side of the spectrum, what do you guys do for fun together? Like, where do you go? What are you doing? Are the vibes the same? Like, what do we need to know? Okay, so... I'm more outgoing and Pums is a homebody. So right. I will be the one saying, you know, what are we going to do? Can we do something? <laughs> are we going to go out? But what, the one thing that we do do all the time, we have a, a night called Comedy Night at right. um, a nearby place where we stay. So we go to Comedy Night and he actually got me into that because I, I didn't believe Comedy Nights were like actually funny, but he took me into it. So that is our thing, Comedy Night for sure. Do you think he could survive on stage as a comedian, seeing that he loves it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Um, geez. No, I can't imagine. No. Mm -mm. Should he just stick to rugby? He should stick to rugby. Stick to, to rugby, rugby and stick to looking after you. How did you guys meet? I think is a double barrel question. Like, okay. how did you meet? And then what was the first impression? Okay. So we met in Nelspreet. I was working at a makeup studio in a mall. So there were glass windows all around. And at the time when he walked into the studio, I had written a list, I think some weeks or a month back of the kind of man I want, you know, from characteristics, tall, dark, handsome, Personally, I wrote it all down and I prayed and I said, God, you make this happen for me, chucked it away and, you know, waited. And um, obviously because of where I worked, there were many men had, had tried their luck. But when he walked in and said what he said, I'll tell you what he said now. But when he left, I said, I think I just said my husband to my colleague. Really? On the side. Yeah. And three years later, I haven't been proved wrong. When you know, you know. Yeah. What did he say? <sighs> he walked in. <sighs> 
I don't know if the word cocky is the right word, but he just pretty much said, hey, my name is Pumzila Makondona. I'm new in town. Um, you listen, I'm just going to leave my number. You decide if you get back to me. Really? And I was like, who does this guy think he is? <laughs> so, <laughs> Look, you guys have a very different story. Most people start in the DMs. He started with a pen and paper and said, girl, Call me if you want to call me on social media. You're very clear and open on the fact that you come from a very big family. Now, normally when people say, I come from a big family, they're like four, six, eight. How many are you guys? I'm a child of 15. I'm the fifth born. Fifth born, 15 siblings. Yes. So 17 people all together with mom and dad. No, all, all of us were dad's kids. And then from oh. my mom, it's just the two of us. Just yeah. the two of you. But still, all together, your siblings, yeah. the squad, yeah. is bigger than the rugby team. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> they could take over with yeah. reserves, water boy, all yes. of those things. Yes. Okay, that thing. probably, sure, you're probably exposed so, to so many personalities then, so many different people, because we know, even with just having like three or four siblings, the three people are completely different in yeah. that household. You know, yeah. one wants to be a lawyer, one wants to be a, uh, a makeup artist, one wants to be on television. Yeah. It probably made you very resilient and used to, you know, things changing all the time, whether it's things and people all around you or it is just scenarios because, you know, your mom had to kind of think on her feet and whilst you're all together, you have to you have to make it work. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, geez, growing up with a big family, not only did I grow up with a big family, we were together in different periods of our lives. So I was with my mom at this stage and then I was with my dad and my dad was with his you know, wife and this many other kids. So I moved a lot and I also experienced different personalities a lot at different periods. Yes. So it really did build for um, just, you can put me anywhere and I'm good. You can put me with different people, I'm good. I, I'm not a, yeah. That's it. Yeah. We can put you in any situation. 100%. And changes don't phase you. Yes. They almost make you more resilient. I enjoy it. You almost thrive in it. Yes. I think it's also clear with like, even just the careers you've chosen. You're like, I'm going to do this. And when I'm done with this, I'm going to do that. Yeah. And then move on to the next thing. So many things I want to do. Yeah. I'm going to call him in now because okay. I feel like we need to just keep him on his toes All and right. just make, make him understand that you are still the queen in the relationship. Thank you know you. what I mean? Like you're, you're in charge, even though <laughs> they don't want to admit it. We are in charge. Let them know. And let's get him to do like a little bit of a quiz. You okay. know, like let's find out what he knows about you, how yeah. much he knows. And I want to, do you think he's going to do really well? I think he'll do good. He knows me. Okay, cool. Yeah. Then let's call him. Okay. Pumzile. Carol, let's welcome Pumzile. Yay. Oh, we can give him like a small round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're used to the big rounds of applause. You're used to like the, yeah, in the stadium. I'm sure it hypes you guys up so much when you like get out and people are screaming and people are screaming oh, your name. No, like, what's that feeling like? No, it's amazing. I mean, it's it's a rush of energy and it's a big motivator, you know, especially when you in the, we're like, we're like calling it the trenches or yes. the dark, dark places. When the fans are there uplifting you, it, it means the world, truly. And of course, when you're doing nonsense, for lack of a better word, they'll let you know as well. So. What, what is like a boo or like a hey, yeah. like, you, they'll, you know? They'll let you know when, you, definitely. when you're going off key, so... Yeah, they're always good in terms of keeping us accountable. Yes, yeah. I like that actually. Mm -hmm. I think it also just speaks to where we are in life as well. That accountability must be had, so mm -hmm. you guys must focus, you know, sure. when you're playing. We're going to play a little bit of a game. We're going to have a bit of fun before we wrap things up. Um, yeah. I want to see how well you know Carol, right? Okay. So I'm going to give you a question. She'll write down her answer, you'll write down yours, and then we'll reveal. We're going to be right. quick about it. I'm strict today. Okay. <laughs> Three seconds to write, and then we're revealing our answers. Okay, cool. Right. First question. What is her dream vacation? Yes. Told you this one recently, baby. Uh, you know what he said when I told him? He's like, he's like, you like bougie things. It's kind of easy to say. <laughs> you like bougie things. Yeah, I'm like, I like okay. nice things, of course. Three, two, one, and reveal. Wow, babe. Italy. But how did you how did you say wow, babe? How did ah, you see that? So, Do you have a mirror? No, this, she, this is a recent one. Like, like, this is very, very girl, recent. What is it? What's the word? <laughs> <laughs> Monaco. Yes. Why Monaco? Um, I, I, I like the was it F1? They have like racing there. The Grand Prix. Yeah. That thing. That thing. That, that thing. thing. <laughs> so that and also just it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's stunning. So yeah. And I like so, Europe. So now because you got that wrong, you definitely have to take it to Monaco, correct? You look into it, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Next one. What is her star sign? 
Yeah, that's baby. No, no, no. Oh, no. When, when, when do, you know any, do you know any star sign? No. Not. I like peeped his answer for a little bit. <laughs> Just okay, give three, it. two, one. Something like that. Capricorn. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm very strict that I normally don't play in halves, but we'll give you that one. So, it's it's the you. same thing. Okay, last one. What did she want to be when she was growing up? Uh. <laughs> okay, and three, two, one. Re reveal. That's the right two. <laughs> hey, what now? <laughs> like a, oh my god! I don't know. Are though? we gonna have like a blurry, like little thing for his answer? Got that one. <laughs> it was one of the things, actually. It was. But so so was he's first. right. Yes. Technically, he's right. Yes. We'll give it to you. We'll give it. So that gives you two. Points. I feel like we're giving, we're being very lenient with you. And I think when the other players watch this, they're gonna come for me and be like, Lisa, so you know, you're, you're super biased. Like, <laughs> cool. but I will take that extra chocolate later on when we wrap. Okay, I'm just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you so so much, guys. Thank it's you. been Thank absolutely you. fun. Um, I really love the yin and yang. I think the balance is so so important. And I can see it here. It's it's a beautiful thing to. Uh, to be a part of it's a beautiful thing to witness so thank you for sharing your love story with us carol thank you so much for thank giving you, us a little bit of yourself today yes. and we really hope to see you guys soon and see more of you on social media <laughs> so whilst they figure out the ring situation for more content on how your favorite rugby players play the bounce visit bright rock website